Today we're going to talk about the most efficient way to grade multicam sequences. Now at first this might seem very obvious, but once you get into it, you realize it's not as straightforward as it may seem. So on the right hand side, we have our timeline view. I'll just move the timeline indicator here. And up here we have all the clips which I've synced by the sound, so they're all playing at the same point in time. Now when you create a multicam clip, it becomes one clip as you see down here in the timeline. In order to see what's inside of there, we have to go into a different timeline. The way that we do that is right click, open in timeline, and now we have a separate timeline. If I scroll up, you can see all the clips stacked on top of each other. Down here in the bottom left, you'll notice where it says timeline one, which is the one that we were just on. And this one is the multicam timeline, which shows us the individual clips. Now, if we go back to the previous timeline, I'm going to double click on timeline one. If we were to head over to the color page, this is what we would see. I brought up the timeline view up here. If I do that, it will disappear. I'll click on timeline so we can see our timeline. We only have our one clip. Now, if you wanted to make an adjustment on all the clips, you could actually do it this way, but just keep in mind that whatever effect or whatever adjustment you make here for color will affect all the clips. For example, if I come down here to the curve and boost this up, and then if we head back to our timeline, pull up our multicam view, all of our clips were affected by that adjustment. But let's say there's something specific we wanted to adjust in one of these clips and we didn't want it to affect the other clips in the timeline. First, let's go back to the color page and let me remove this grade. Now let's head back into our other timeline. So I will right click, open in timeline. And now we're back to where we can see all of our individual clips. Let's now head over to the color page and you'll notice in our timeline view, we can see all these clips now, all these individual blue bars are a clip. Now, right now we're only seeing the top clip. If I were to scroll up here, this is the only clip that we're seeing. If I were to click on any of the other clips, all we are viewing is the top one. So you may have noticed that the footage changed a little bit, but it's still the same footage. All it did was as soon as I clicked on the clip, it brought it to the beginning of that one. But if I scroll here, You'll notice what that clip is doing. If I click on the top one in the timeline, it's the same exact footage. Again, if I click on this one, it brought it to the beginning. We can see that because it is before our top clip. But once again, if I come back here, that's the only thing that we can see. But let's say, for example, we wanted to look at this particular clip, the one that I have highlighted in red right now. We can actually come over here to the left-hand side. And if I click on these, we can disable them. So, in reality, I could get to the point where once these are all selected and clicked off, now we're looking at the footage that we can adjust. So here, if I wanted to, I could do something like this and then come back and click on all of these. We're looking at the top one again. Let me come back to the left. Here we have our clip where I adjusted the gamma. Now that is not the most efficient way to do this because in this case, it was only the fourth one down, maybe the fifth one down but let's say we wanted to adjust something at the bottom here. Of course, we could come in here and we could continue to click on the left-hand side until we get to that point. But there's actually a button that takes care of this for you. And I'll show you what I mean. If I choose this button right here, this is the unmix button. And what this will do is only show the one that you have selected. There are other functions of the unmix button and that includes removing transitions or compositions. So for lack of a better word, you're seeing the unedited footage so you can focus on just the clip itself. But what I can do now without trying to disable it on the left-hand side, if I click on any of these, now the clip is showing in the viewer. If I wanted to make some adjustment to this clip right here, let's say I come over to red and drop that down a little bit and move over to another clip, that one's not affected. So this is actually the most efficient way that you can go about color grading particular clips. Now here, all these cameras seem to be at the same luminance. So there doesn't appear to be that many adjustments that we need to make, but let's imagine that you're trying to film a multi-cam sequence and you have two different cameras and you did wanna make specific adjustments from one to the next. That's when something like this would come in handy. Let's talk about this video's sponsor, Artlist.
Artlist is a royalty-free music subscription service where you can find high-quality music and sound effects. Once you download a song with an active subscription, it's yours forever. Finding the music you need is extremely easy. The songs are in well-defined categories, and those categories can also be combined. You can also sort by length, and even if the vocals are male or female. Your yearly subscription includes unlimited downloads with no additional costs. If you're interested, you can get two additional months on top of your yearly subscription using my link in the description below. Now I'm going to remove these grades because you may have a thought about another way to do this and I want to show you how that may not be effective either. So let me go ahead and remove the grade from here and the one from here. So now we're back to the original footage. Let's head back to our original timeline. We're on our edit page and let's play through this and let's see if we can make an adjustment how that affects everything else. I'll explain what I mean as we go along. Let me just mute this audio just in case it comes through. So I'm playing through and let's say I want to cut to this view. And in the timeline, you may notice that it put an edit point in there. And that should be sufficient. So let's say that we think we're done with what we have here. We've reviewed the footage, we've made our cuts, and now we actually want to head over to the color page to make the adjustments. We don't want to go into the other view where we have all those different clips. We only want to edit what we've chosen. Again, this sounds good in theory, but that may pose a potential problem. So I'm coming over into the color page. I'm on the last clip right here. Let's maybe choose blue and introduce some blue in here. This color adjustment isn't something that I'd actually do, but I just want to make it more obvious. But then later on, we realize we want to make another adjustment. Maybe we think that this particular clip was held too long and we do want to cut to a different angle. So we'll head back to our timeline and we'll play through our clip a little bit more. Let me change this to the multicam view and I'll cut to angle four. So now we have a new clip here and you may already be noticing the problem. Now that we have the fourth clip selected, if I head over to the color page, it still has that adjustment. So on one hand, if you've locked down the edit and you know that no other adjustments will be made, you obviously can come in here and adjust them on a clip to clip basis. But as you saw, any additional cuts that you make will take on the properties of whatever clip that you're cutting. Once again, the unmix option that I showed you is really effective if you need to make adjustments on one clip. For example, if there's a piece of footage that shows maybe the sky that the other clips don't show and you need to bring down the luminance a little bit, you'll be able to do that without adjusting the other clips. So hopefully that made sense. If there's any confusions or if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Please check out some of the videos that I have on the screen right now, and I will see you in the next video.